right, we're doing episode 58, Three Bros Podcast. We get to a um, couple things that we're going to talk about today, but there's one thing I wanted to get to first, which was kind of fun. So I've been tweeting random things out into empty space, which you guys know, right? Sure. Um, someone retweeted it today in a whole bunch, and there was like comments that were made. So let's go through them. Let's this do it. It's going to be great. This is going to be great because <laughs> oh, no. I took a quick look at them and for reasons. Anyways, let's just go through it. <laughs> what was the tweet? So. Oh, damn. There's only the one comment. All right. But still, it's great. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's a great comment. I got to. What's the gotta, comment? Joe's excited that someone's so, engaging with him on the internet. <laughs> no, listen, no, listen to this and you tell me why. Oh, okay. It's funny it because we're talking about the internet, too. You can find anyone to engage with on the internet, and it's probably going to be a troll, a snarky asshole. Is it's, that what we're getting at? Um, let's, you'll that you'll let great. me know. <laughs> so this person, this person retweets me and goes, oh, what and by the tweet? way, it wait, was which the... Tweet? What was the tweet? Yeah, wait, pull up. Pull up the account. I'm oh, on wait, it right now. Just... Um, oh crap. Show me. Yeah. It's the one that says vote. See, it's got like nine squares and 15 hearts. It says vote. Okay, so anyways. <laughs> Which one is it? The one that, that it says, it's got the picture that says vote. Oh, you're sharing it. Yeah, go down. There you oh, go. Okay, here it is. Here we go. Okay, now you got him. Look at you go. All right, but that's not what we need to look at. I should oh, share my oh. screen. But oh. anyways. Anyways, that's the tweet. Whatever. And I'll read off uh, the reference. Crap, I got to go back to the notifications. A whole bunch of people just retweeted it. So that was nice of them. Because then that means that they didn't say anything negative. But this girl goes, do not vote third party. <laughs> read Ooh. the whole tweet. <laughs> just read the whole tweet in the hashtags, though. It's quite critical. Well, wait, oh, I don't know how sharing? to. Uh, yeah, I stopped sharing because I don't know. I I can't see the comment. I mean, it's I'll go back here. I'm I'm back on. I can't even it's pull up the Twitter. I'm back on, but where do I? Just leave it there. You're fine. It's not. Well, where's the comment it. back? No, you oh, can't you can't see. see it. It. Okay. Why I is can election read it because it's in my holiday? Holiday? it's in my notifications. Why so. isn't election day on a weekend? Why don't all states allow no excuse early voting for a month beforehand? We. Don't do enough to encourage voter participation, and it's disgraceful. Hashtag we can do better. Hashtag vote third party. So what was the comment? So think about the sensitive time that we're in in the next two weeks. Right, right. Any, anytime you, I feel like anytime you hashtag vote anything, people are going to like hawk it these days, especially as we get up to the election on Twitter. So <laughs> she retweets it and goes, do not vote third party. Not this election. Jesus Christ. Hashtag vote blue to save America. Vote blue to save America. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Uh, and it is nice that someone actually engaged with me, and I'm not in empty space. Chat. Did wrong. you? Well, see, here's the question though: Did you comment back? Like, how does that work? No, I yeah, think Twitter. No, I'm, I'm just gonna pump shit out. Body slam for a while. Nope. I'm just gonna just pump Verbally. stuff out. No, I mean she's not wrong. No body though. slammer, yeah, that's that's not wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I said you should do that, but I was kidding. <laughs> she's not. Here's the thing, though. She's not wrong. I mean, voting third she's, party is not going to be. Yeah, a and, until we and listen, your voting system, right. or you have enough people on board to actually win elections. Right, and listen, I it's. But it's wait a minute. I'm the one that tweeted that, and I'm not even voting third party. I am for voting third party for governor, <laughs> but you know the rest right. of the ballot. I think but I'm gonna vote. Minute. I'll go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Voting third party definitely sends a message. Yeah, but it doesn't win elections. No, but it, it can lose you elections. Right. If you, so, for example, if listen, I are, yeah. hold on. If you're a conservative and you're not hardcore enough into supporting the Second Amendment rights, you can lose a lot of votes to somebody who is. And vice versa on the other side, right? If you're not for legalizing cannabis, and again, I'll use our own election coming up here for governorship uh cuomo changed his stance because cynthia nixon was taking votes from him on, on marijuana yeah on and a primary. we're talking about a general election here nobody's you're not going to vote third party but didn't you say you were going to vote for third party on, on this last podcast you didn't you say you were going to vote for stephanie minor most likely 
Yeah, but she's not going to, I know that she's not going to win. That's the, but that's, but that's a third party candidate. candidate. Why would you then, because what you're saying is, what are you saying there? It's useless to vote for a third party? Yeah, with our current electoral system, it definitely. So then is. why vote a third party? Well, because I'm voting. So I guess Chad, 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 can, <laughs> Chad can admit that it's, it's very hard to win in our society and how we've set it up third party, but also vote third party because he thinks it's the best choice for him. You know, that doesn't mean I don't think Stephanie Miner is going to win. That doesn't mean that stops me from voting for her because I want to, because I think she's the best candidate. Right. But at the same time, is it so these are on, for, yeah. Oh, sorry. Isn't voting for Stephanie Miner a vote to tell um, the closest political affiliation of the larger two parties? Like, Hey, you're not doing enough. Name the last time an independent. Yes, party. in this specific election, yes. Okay, but you know you can Chad, go election go by election. I'm okay. saying the context yeah. of this this coming election is sure. that if you want to see some real change with whatever's going on with the current administration and his friends, then you obviously don't want to vote I, for your party. I, I, I do hesitate at you saying That's real change. Saying. I think I agree with you. If you want to have a real check on Trump, then yeah. But a real change. Are you the current, I said the current administration. What? You can't do that until 2020. Okay. Or you I, mean, oh, just Congress, you mean? Congress. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Control, yeah. All right, I, I guess I shouldn't have said administration, but hmm. whoever's in the current political power seat, if you want to change that, then she's saying, don't, obviously don't or vote. Right. You're not going to change anything this election. I mean, you could you could send a message by voting third party, but I mean, I don't know. She's being specific with this. She's saying, "Vote." What did she say? Hashtag vote blue to save vote America. Blue, I think yeah, to save yeah. America. <laughs> there you go, dude. I'm just saying she's not wrong. Is all I'm saying. If you, oh, no, I hear you. I, I guess I just wanted to unpack that statement a little bit because it may. It, in that brief moment, it sounded like you were saying, "Well, yeah, right. you're not wrong. Why would you vote for a third party?" When that's what I was confused about because literally just on this podcast the last episode you were like yeah I'm voting for the party for Stephanie Miner and I guess maybe I guess if we unpack that a little more that's for governor which isn't federal which different context so I get I, I I see what you're saying all right what do we got next oh okay we get to be upset about Elizabeth Warren that's it that excites everybody <laughs> here we go um. Just, you know, I know, obviously, a good question to ask about this whole Elizabeth Warren situation. Um, you know, and real quick, she released her DNA results, and someone, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's like like 130th Native American or something around there. I think it's a lot less than that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very something small like amount. That. Well, it's Apparently. small. Right, it's small. So she does this, and, you know, it's a fair question to ask who started this, you know, like, Trump probably kind of pissed her off, I'm sure pissed her off a bunch of times by calling her Pocahontas and doing whatever the heck he did. Um, I just, I just don't know why, like, does anybody have any idea why she retaliated? Like, I heard some, like, you know, talking head takes on YouTube when I was, you know, watching some videos of like, oh, she wants to get this out of the way before she runs for president so it doesn't come up again. And I'm just like, I don't understand why it ever has to come up. I don't know why she ever has to do this. Well, Trump did keep calling it. Pocahontas. He kept... Okay, he I, understand he did. That. I understand that. And unfortunately, that does actually have an effect. Um, but I sure. don't think doing what she did is going to make it any better or make the problem go away. It's just not. You just you just shouldn't engage with that kind of rhetoric. And she did. I don't know why she did. Yeah. I right. think what really hurt them is looking at it through the eyes of. I mean, if you look at it the other way around, if I'm going through kind of the lens of like, like a, I don't know. I I hate to say it like this, but kind of a liberal, right? Um, reducing that identity to something that you can just tote around is kind of shitty. You know, that's kind of exactly what Democrats typically stand for, not reducing other people down to being, you know, X and then using that for whatever purpose. So I, I'm for me, I'm referring specifically to an article written by Nick Estes at The Intercept, uh, the title being Native American sovereignty is under attack 
here's how Elizabeth Warren's DNA test hurt our struggle. Um, I and saw one, that the Cherokee Nation criticized her or some, something like that. What yes. What's that? Oh, sorry. Carry on. Title of the uh, article. Go ahead again. Oh, title is Native American Sovereignty is Under Attack. Here's how Elizabeth mm. Warren's DNA test hurt our struggle. Mm. Um, I'll kind of throw it up real quick so you can kind of see it. Okay. <clears throat> so as you go down through here, um, whites claiming Indian blood tend to reinforce mythical beliefs about Indians. Throughout her career, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Democrat from Massachusetts, has used that mythical belief. Uh, what Deloria mocked as the Indian grandmother complex to stake a claim to Native American identity, like how her European settler ancestors staked a claim to land once called Indian Territory or what is currently Oklahoma. Um, so what I find interesting about that is, you know, the idea that you're just you're you're just kind of using this kind of like in in the people who would be voting for you, supporting you now, are not going to because you're kind of using. Um, you're kind of doing the same thing that that uh, a lot of people hate white people for anyway, right? Going into something and taking it as their own, owning it as something that's theirs and it's not. Um, and listen, if you're going to run for president, you just you just blew a kneecap out trying to do that by doing this, which it's unfortunate because I I would want as many people as possible to try to run for the presidency, right? Yeah, I don't really know how to feel about that article. I think I feel both things. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah, I, I so, just, I just feel like, come on, yo, like, so, so they <clears throat> they get a pass on everything, for real? No. So they what I like, tried to do right. in this particular story, because I know you yeah. wanted to talk about, it, is I tried to come from the perspective of, of somebody who's not me, which obviously is insanely hard to do, right? I'm obviously a white dude. Mm -hmm. Um. I can't sympathize at all with Native Americans. Uh, but I tried to do everything I could to kind of put myself in that mindset. And the closest sure, thing I got sure. is this is just another example of white people trying to take something that's not theirs. It, it, although I might not agree with that premise, I can understand how it comes off to those who it of course. directly impacts. Of course. I would just, you know, for me, um, I, I guess my approach to that would be like trying to actually talk to Natives about their struggles and like how to solve them. <clears throat> you know, because I just, we can, we can, we sh we can and should always teach history and frame a lot of our mindset off of that because we stand on shoulders as far as human rights, for sure. Mm -hmm. And we can easily slip and, and, and go backwards, which you've done many a time. So like we can, we can talk about history and learn from it and that's fine. But we also need a plan moving forward, like for how to like do better, you know? I'm always saying that I know, but so I guess for me, I would just like, if I was in charge of, you know, uh, let's say I was a representative of whatever, and there was native lands in my jurisdiction, you know, I'd talk to the leaders and I'd be like, what can we do moving forward? Like what the heck's going on here? Like, I'm sure they could use universal healthcare, but you know, just to start. <laughs> well, the thing that I also find interesting too, is I wonder how disconnected Senator Warren is from um, Native American struggles, because the fact of the matter is that sure. she's a senator for Massachusetts. I highly doubt she goes to very many tribal lands. You know what I mean? Very yeah. often. I don't know yeah. how many actual Native Americans live in Massachusetts right now, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah, a lot. You know. That's why I feel both ways about this. I really, I, at this point, it's just like, you know, it just stinks. I it just really stinks that she like opened up. She she like picked at the scab. You know. It's like one of those topics where everyone's like, let's just let it go away. Nobody, nobody bring it up. You know, well, do you think I this mean, is Trump also brings it up like an idiot? Cause he says Pocahontas all the time. But, well, well, so that brings me to my question. I was about to know. ask, does this in any way, shape or form represent what Donald Trump is doing to American politics right now? And that is, is, is people feel like somehow they have to go down to his, his level or to prove one way or another, something or, or something or other. Because of the way that he behaves and the way that he I, I don't know mannerisms, no, I, I don't know. Then why do the DNA test? Oh, oh, you don't. Were, know. I, I apologize. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, there were definitely some takes that were like, "Oh, she's doing this so that Trump can't attack it so, as much anymore." So, like, there's some. If that's true, there's some credit to what you're saying. I don't know, dude. I just I don't know. 
Like, like that's also, what I feel like. Also, though, nobody's that... bad as Trump. Have you seen some of the lies he said in the last week leading up to the midterms? Like he's truly scared of Democrats taking over because he's told whoppers day he after is, day yeah, he after. Is. It is so bad, dude. Muslims yeah. in the caravan. Democrats. Just, what blows my mind is that people like, aren't really. Crap, how are more people not upset at it's all stressed. these rallies that he's, he's doing? Like. Oh, they love it. They eat it up. The amount of time that he wastes holding rallies, not only trying to get himself reelected in 2020 already, Crazy. but campaigning yeah. on other people's behalf. It's like, bro, what do you actually do? It's yeah. it's he, seriously. So, and who, we can we can roll this discussion right into the um the journalist Khashoggi. Oh discussion. lord, because one of the lies that Trump lobbed up in. I think it says it happened either today or yesterday. Donald Trump touts non-existent 450 billion in Saudi orders and 1 million jobs. So he basically is still kind of, oh, it's October 20th. He's still kind of covering for Saudi Arabia because we have 450. This is what he said. With all that being said, though, we have 450 billion, 110 billion of which is a military order. But this is equipment and various things ordered from Saudi Arabia. 450 billion, Trump said. I think it's over a million jobs. That's not helpful for us to cancel an order like that. That hurts us for, far more than it hurts them. The 110 billion in arms sales to the Saudis would be eye popping enough, but this was the first time we heard the 450 billion total that included everything else. <laughs> Nor has Trump said that 1 million jobs are on the line. We decided to check these points. Hang on. Key takeaways. Saudi Arabia has not ordered 110 billion worth of military goods and services. Saudi Arabia has not ordered 450 billion worth of goods and services across the board. Over 1 million jobs are not at stake. <laughs> And then it goes on and it tells you why. But. So I was watching CNN last yeah. night with Alex. <laughs> and actually CNN hit the nail on the head for this one. They actually did a, a cut for cut each uh, time he had talked about how many jobs this might impact. Just and keeps going up. Do you know what the number started at? <laughs> like a thousand maybe? Who knows? It started at 40,000 jobs. <laughs> and he went up to like 80,000. Oh, and he was like 100. <laughs> and then it was 250. And then it was half a million. Uh, and then I didn't even hear it got to a million. Like, I don't think yesterday it got to to a million when I watched those clips. Yeah. So, and so this I, was my point when I first wrote you guys about this topic, right? Like, specifically, you know, the family has close ties with the Saudis. I mistakenly wrote to you guys, it goes way back. It seems that the, the Kushner connection to the crown prince only goes back to the beginning of the administration. But um, at the beginning of the administration, the first um, rival, not rival, but the first foreign power they visited was, you remember when Trump touched that glowing orb? They went to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. That was like the first country they went to. You guys know what I'm talking about? That awesome picture where Trump's touching a glowing orb with a bunch oh of Oh my God, him. yeah. It's so amazing, dude. So Anyways. weird. Oh. Caleb, have you not seen this? Memeable as fuck. Anyways. Um, oh, hold on. So it doesn't go way back before the presidency. It just goes back to the beginning. But they're so they're close. And it's just my question to you guys, too, is like, it, it, it confuses me even more that it only goes back to the beginning of the administration because it feels like Trump, he just picks and chooses who he loves and hates. And if you're it's on his hate list, it's, that's it. And it seems like he loves, oh, God, him. <laughs> it seems like Trump loves authoritarian that's leaders so much more and, like, builds tremendous friendships and bonds with, like, authoritarian, authoritative leaders so quickly compared to just, like, traditional allies, traditional Democratic ones. You know, it just feels so weird. Like, this, this, uh, this happens over and over again. Why Why are they so tight with the Saudis? Like, why is he even trying to defend them over this? Who cares? Who cares? There's not that many jobs at stake. The arms deal that was announced at the time was $110 billion. But if you read the article, and I should post the link, which I'll post the link in the comments. But if you read the article, like, it clearly states that at most there's, like, tens of thousands of jobs, but not a million, like... Why is he doing this? I don't know. So here's here's what I found so about that that hundred billion number. Uh, the deal brokered last year between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia was merely a memorandum of intent to fulfill nearly 110 billion dollars in arms sales over the next ten years. Mm -hmm. As of yet, Saudi Arabia has only signed letters of offer and acceptance, official purchase agreements that have either already been approved by Congress or in the process of being approved. For fourteen point five billion in purchases, so it's a, it's not even that big of an arms deal that we're talking about here. It's a, it's it's an intent to fulfill one hundred ten billion dollars in arms sales over the next ten years, of which fourteen point five billion has been secured. Right, 
and so he's not he willing to risk. I mean, I don't know why he cares. This there, there's no way the world can just sit back and not punish Saudi Arabia for this. They did this in broad daylight in a different country, and they murdered a journalist. That's that's so aggressive. That's... And Trump is just downplaying it constantly. That's unbelievable. I know, dude. So there has to be something going on here. It's not this arms deal that he's worried about. This is the crazy stuff. This is literally conflict of interest, and it smells like bullshit <clears throat> in plain sight. Like, oh, and I, I, I never remember things being this. Like, Trump is transparent with his, like, conflicts of interest and, in, like, just general, just nearsightedness i don't even know how to describe it here's my question yeah go ahead do you Let's think do you think saudi arabia attempts to do something akin to this if let's say obama or a bush were let's say obama was was president do you think this happens and okay well i'm saying do well, you think their boldness is encouraged because explicitly because donald trump is the american president currently I, th I think, think that makes sense. And I, yeah, I think he okay. is. I, I think that makes sure. sense that they, they'd be more bold with Trump in power to the point where they might think they could have been able to pull this off, but public pressure is such a thing these days that it's just tough to duck, you know, anything, it seems like. It's crazy. Like, the age we live in is just, like, I don't know. What if we didn't have such mass communication, like, and we had a president like Trump who was close with the Saudis, and this happened? And uh, yeah, sure, everybody in the Beltway and in the uh, political commentary news media got all up in arms because it's yeah, he apparently worked at the Washington Post. But like, does the average American in Kansas or Washington State or Idaho or Utah care? No. But because we all can share things like this, the public pressure is intense and. Um, but yeah, I think maybe it could have happened because they were like, oh, we're close with the administration. Maybe we can get away with this. And then maybe I don't think anything got communicated back to the Trump. No, act, no, 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 I don't. Think I don't so. think so but either. But it could have felt so brave because sure. I was going to. That's what I'm asking, though. Do you think yeah. do you think the fact that Trump is in office was an influencing factor in this extremely bold move i don't know what they thought because was going to happen to, yeah. here either did they really think did you I read about some of the, how they tried to pull this off it's like it's comical almost yeah, i don't know like what and, was and, their plan their excuses, here their excuses it felt like they weren't even planning to have excuses um but this is what i'll say to you chad because we have because we're all just we love talking about this shit and all we're doing if anybody ever listens we're just bullshitting don't take us seriously all i can say is like that makes sense how about that i mean nobody, nobody can say yes or no but like that makes sense that they would feel bold, emboldened to do something like that if they're close to this administration. You know, mm. that makes a lot of sense. So, <laughs> well, especially when America is the biggest <laughs> power player on that stage. Yeah. The rest of the world, the rest of the world is starting to, you know, what was that? There was some, there was some economic summit that was coming up in Saudi Arabia soon, and there were a bunch of representatives being sent from companies and from certain governments and slowly you know the companies or sorry the the governments pulled up pretty quickly but the co the companies were slow to act because they know the money is there but eventually they all started pulling out as well yeah um but did you see that one of trump's advisors already met with with the king recently after this had happened what's his name um steve oh, yeah. I don't know how you pronounce his last name. <laughs> Mew Mewchen? Mewchen? Steve Mnuchin? Mnuchin. There you go. Yeah. Wait, what about Steve Mnuchin? That's not, he's not a king. What? No, he met with the Saudi. I said king. He met with the Saudi crown prince after okay. the killing had gone down. I'm not saying he's well, a king. Yeah, it's my bad. He was supposed <laughs> to go to that conference, right? But according no, to but his Wikipedia, Steven Mnuchin a former investment banker who's serving as the 77th and current United States Secretary of the Treasury as part of the cabinet of Donald Trump. And he looks like John Oliver 0.5. <laughs> like John Oliver is his 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> but those uh, glasses my question. for sure. <laughs> yeah, Here's my question, you guys, is, as we're talking about this whole thing with Saudi and, and everything, 
Can I get an opinion from you guys about Erdogan criticizing Saudi Arabia? Dude, the whole what thing they've is done? stupid because Turkey is also moving in such a weird authoritarian direction and has done weird stuff over the years. So, you know, at some point, it's just finger point. At some point, we, like, should start to worry us that, like, a whole bunch of weirdly pseudo-authoritarian leaders are kind of, like, pointing fingers and... And, like, you're, Caleb, I like that you bring that up, too, because it's, like, is there a reason why Saudi Arabia thought that they could do it on Turkish soil and get away with it? Like, why did they think that? I know. Why did they do that? <laughs> I'm going to assume that's that it's because that's where they could lure Khashoggi, and he didn't, because he wouldn't, like, go back, because he... Well, of I course they wouldn't go back to Saudi knew, Arabia. Yeah, he was, he's been critical of the crown prince, so he knew that his life wasn't, like, as safe as it otherwise should have been if he wasn't a dissident right like so mm. he's aware of this i like read some something like that so here's my question the I other thing and, and, yeah. and we may be getting into tinfoil hat territory here a little oh, bit but what is the likelihood or not likelihood of this not actually being anything that the family or the prince specifically had did zero percent <laughs> because of everything that's come out after and the There's change a, yeah. the story from the saudis <clears throat> It, there could have been some ambiguity if they handled it better, but they've handled it like shit from day one. One, so, one of one yeah. of the alleged murderers or yeah. co-conspirators is like one is is the crown prince's right hand man, essentially not right hand man, but somebody that's very close and very high up there with the crown prince, and he was directly involved with whatever so, bullshit went down there like there's just I, a I lot of ties that suggest don't want to defend the orders came from the top and no, you're fine that happened right so but the one thing that i do know is that sometimes when orders come from the top to interrogate somebody mm -hmm. or to pull somebody in right in a situation like this sometimes and i hate to say it this way but like mistakes happen right so yeah. You could easily kill someone in interrogation depending on the methods used, right, Cyril? I mean, is that a fair statement? Bro, he's a journalist. They're not going to interrogate this guy, and then their plan was to let him go. He's a, a journalist. A, he a, writes for a, the Washington Post. In a country with human rights track record as Saudi Arabia, yes. But but I mean, let's let Caleb finish first. Go ahead. I, I guess my thought process being... Yeah. He's a journalist, dude. There's there's no, no reason he's in that office you, alive. You pull somebody in, I get no this. way. I, and again, like I said, this might be tinfoil hat territory, but I'm just going to go on a limb. What if the potential there is that this journalist says he's being pulled in is talking shit, essentially, about the crown prince, and one of them just turns around and just punches him in the mouth, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, so, we already punched him. Might as well fuck him up now. So, like, what? and that could be Besides disconnected feeling from... feeling ridiculous? Sure, sure. I'm just... Oh, the reason why I'm saying that, though, is because that, that's, that's definitely happened. Okay. And besides feeling ridiculous, um, <laughs> it's been reported okay. that they... I haven't read um, a ton of it. That's why I'm... Reclothed probably... someone who... A, a body double that they had waiting. They reclothed someone that... So they clearly were intending to murder this man because they had a body double waiting. They he did. put his clothes on and walked out. Okay, two, they okay. originally said they had nothing to do with this. They didn't know where Khashoggi was. And then all of a sudden it was, oh, a fist fight. A fight broke so out. Happened, a fight broke out. And then all of a sudden it was a fist fight broke out and he died. Okay, are you kidding me? Like, wow, you're the Saudis it's, and you can't get on the same page? This is crazy that these guys can't. It's it's honestly, though, so nope. unorganized that it... It, it is. is. It's almost unbelievable Which, wait, how but, comically but, bad it was. So it, I, right. I don't, know, I what, like I don't know what to point believe. Right there, Chad, and I apologize for cutting you off, but I feel like the point you just made, I feel like lends credence to the fact that somehow... This wasn't the intended thing to, to occur. My, my point is, the Crown though, Prince. is that it ended there's up audio. The Turkish Portland. government claims to have audio. I guess they so, do. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Until Secretary Erdogan. Pompeo. Until he releases that, we all actually hear it. I'm, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt just because of who is saying it. That's it's, fine. It's, first and, of all, a lot of the video evidence has been released. Sure. It's been corroborated. corroborated and, well, the video evidence has been walking in, yes. And There's and something. of the body double leaving. Of the body double, yeah, I saw the body double video. A lot of video evidence of Yo, like yeah. certain cars Zero. moving in the day out of, of and then of leaving that same out day. Out of respect for not being actually there and knowing what happened, there's a point zero zero one percent chance. <laughs> I, I think okay, that's fair. It's, as far as right. I'm concerned, these orders came from the top, and the orders were to kill, and it was just done very poorly. Is it shocking that that it would have come from the crown prince? 
he tries to paint himself as a progressive leader of Saudi Arabia. Like mm -hmm. uh, in the last some... year, I think women were given the right to drive. Yeah. Quote unquote, unquote right. allegedly, even though some people are still being punished for it. Allegedly. Um, well, sure. I'm not going to give Saudi Arabia any credit sure. here, as far as I'm concerned. Quote but, unquote, allegedly. <laughs> but um, so I, I am a little surprised that he would do this so blatantly. But apparently this guy that what's what's his name? Khashoggi, this journalist mm -hmm. that was killed, was he was super critical of the crown prince. So I'm also not, I'm surprised, but I'm not really surprised if that mm -hmm. is an answer I can give you. Yeah. Again, I'll put my tin oil foil head. Away. I, I, I didn't read a whole ton about it. Um, I think when things come to the Trump administration, all you have to ask yourself is, is this in Trump's best interest? If the answer is yes, then that is what they are doing. How it's crazy. The is no. On and that, that is that what they are doing. So lying because it'll boost turnout on a certain side out of a certain base, and that'll get to you, get you to where you need to be to win. That elections. makes it. Hold on, hold on. Trump will do. Trump will do. I completely agree with you. Right, hundred percent correct. I agree with you. How does changing the narrative about Saudi Arabia help Trump? That's my question. Pumping up investment and job numbers makes him look better when it is but, but, but they're not even real numbers. there's something there's something that that's what i'm saying him. he's lying he's he using lying. fake numbers right I, so, so how, there's how, something there's something how, that keeps him beholden to the saudis and now that that now right. that he has to kind of smooth this over he is now trying to s s send it he, he's trying to convey to his base that it's for even at trying, this point he, yeah, he has ahead. done nothing to um, make it seem like he has distanced himself and is independently thinking about it in any way. Even to this point, like even the last statements he made, like they were so they're always wishy washy. It really feels like they're just hoping it goes away. They're asking Trump to go pee in the bushes with something again. So some new cycle can just get kicked up again and they can just like throw this under the rug. Except in the last two years, because we live in the Trump world, the rug is getting so goddamn full. <laughs> well, because right? this is so indefensible, yeah. <laughs> the fact that he has to paint it some way to his base means he starts pulling out the typical talking points. You know, we can't give up these jobs. We got money coming in. This is going to hurt us more than it would hurt them. Like, no, I mean, we're protecting pre existing conditions. Dude, I've seen that out of a lot bullshit. of Republican candidates, and that incenses me. I'm like, come on, just be honest. Just be honest. Don't lie. Anyway. Yeah, we're not going to. Uh, I mean, though, can we talk times. about how much health insurance costs? So this is the year for yeah. most companies that we're talking about open enrollment. I don't know yeah. if, if Cyril, if you had get get that at work, if you see any emails or something about that. I know I just did, and mm -hmm. I'm sitting there with my boss, and he's sitting there. He's like, dude, if you add in the copays for the standard visits that I have to do. Now, mind you, my, my boss is a failing ticker and mm. all sorts of other medical problems as well. He's like, I'm going to be paying like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a month. And, and God damn. This can, this, can, this, can spark the last, let's, let, this can spark the last discussion. We can drive it home the last 20 minutes with this, maybe, by me saying if, 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 if a lot of other like Bernie always says on the stump and, and beats his drum. If a lot of other countries, especially Canada and Scandinavian countries and a lot of Western European countries can pull off single payer healthcare. And it is a fact that per capita, the systems they have created, they spend less than we do on our healthcare. I don't know why we don't try to do that. And, and, and anybody who wants to oppose single payer healthcare or something like that is welcome to do so. I just, there's overwhelming evidence and so many other places that are similar to us. It just works. And so I just don't know what we're doing anymore. And if that's, you know, maybe that doesn't spark a discussion, but there's some people out there. I just, and I think, I think dude, polls back me up on this. Like even a majority of Republicans support, and this is polls, so grain of salt, of course, but <laughs> there always has to be it's fine <laughs> but yeah polls in general if the average of polls like people people are behind something like this so i just you know there's just there's just things that uh, i'm fine i'm fine to 
And of course, as we always are in on this pod, if someone has an idea, that's no problem. Bring your idea in. You just you just have to explain it and tell me why. Like, if you don't like single payer, like, what is your solution? Right. Usually, I hear crickets. So, <sighs> because I hear that, you know, I don't I don't have healthcare through work just yet. I still get it through the school for free. Um, or not for free, but nothing's free, kids. But <laughs> I get it because of the GI Bill. And, um, but there's a lot of, I'm, I'm super, the, the number one thing I'm addicted to watching on YouTube is actual, like when news organizations don't ask questions, go out there and just like ask people what they think, like actual voters, you know, panels like that fascinates me hearing what people actually think and like real people and where they're at. And a lot of times healthcare comes up on these panels, man. And whether they're right or left, people are, they complain about the same thing. It's like unaffordable. And it's like, okay, well we can agree on this problem that's happening and is growing and growing and growing. Just like, it feels like we can't agree on a solution. And I don't know why. And I think a big part, a big variable. And I think a lot of people would agree with this is you're probably got a lot of lobbying on behalf of whatever interest makes money off the healthcare system here. And they don't want to see it change. I'm sure that's a big case or a big part of it, <laughs> but there's more like, I don't know. The lies from Republicans don't help in the last couple of weeks. I'm not trying to like Republicans aren't bad. That's not what we ever try to say here, but they're definitely lying about protecting pre-existing conditions. Josh Hawley is a U.S. Senate candidate in Missouri running for Senate, ran an ad that said, I am protecting pre-existing conditions. I feel for you families because my son was sick and it and blah, 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 used his son for this ad. Meanwhile, he is literally a signer on the lawsuit that is going through the courts right now on its way to the Supreme Court to literally get rid of pre-existing conditions. Like, this this is nuts. Is it possible that, that he just doesn't understand the bill? Then I don't like, know why he is running no, anything. No, hold, hold on, hold on. I agree with you. I'm just, I'm yeah. merely throwing out there. Is there, is, because one of the things that I notice is that, especially with some of these bills that are a thousand pages, like, there's, there's no friggin way you went through this whole thing line for line and understood that's, it to the fullest you said a lawsuit though a lawsuit that's and but forget about that chad that's fine just everybody come together sit down and let's be honest a lot of people aren't being honest about this just a lot of people are beating their political drum and then getting in power and nothing's happening you know what republicans you ran on repealing obamacare for a long time that's fine if you think that's the way to go let's do it and let's see the results oh you couldn't get it done <laughs> that means nothing happened nothing yeah and it's just it's frustrating this is the crap that like i hope there's a secret majority out there that are like us that just like would rather see things get done i'd rather see conservative ideas implemented and the data to come back from that and to analyze it than nothing happen at all it's so maddening come out anyway, especially when that's your like white whale for eight years and the moment you actually get reins of power you have nothing you have no plan Right, and let's not kid ourselves. Anything. Let's be fair. Both both parties have done it over the years. It's oh, just for disgusting. sure. Hey, at least and the Democrats, just... even though it was like ended up being half the plan that Obama wanted, at least they fucking got something. So I feel there. like my number one thing, and I think we always circle back to this on a lot of topics. My number one thing is get big money and interest out of politics. These people should be representing us, not any sort of interest or anything and just making best decisions based on their constituents, you know, but I'm really thinking that number two, not, maybe not number two yet, but what's rising really quickly is just reforming our voting system so that we can have like more parties, more participation, more encouragement, more people to get fired up about. And this is how we get people to come out. Not, in, not by mandatory voting. Ew. If we kept a two party system and we told everyone you have to vote, that would turn off so many more people. That is the worst decision that you could make. If you want people to actually participate, don't do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we should have, like, should reform the system so that a whole bunch of people can, like, you know, run. And then if nobody gets 50%, then you go to a top two and everybody can run. And everybody, everybody gets a certain amount of public funding. All they have to do is get signatures, show that you have popular support. You know, doesn't that sound wonderful? Yeah? I don't know. It does to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag we can do better. Instead, we got all this private money rolling into the parties because they have established infrastructure that keeps their power. And so more money just helps them cling to it. These bastards. <laughs> Give me a soapbox. Anyways. 
Oh, here we go. Plot effect. I'm gonna. I need to source this. Even if nobody looks at it, I need to source it because it's a strong statement to say that Josh Hawley is literally against. Pre- I just wanted to. Yeah. Just one last thing to point out about the Saudi Arabia conversation. Oh, go ahead. Um. Because Obama was not, it's not just the Republicans that are close to the Saudis. Uh, Obama no, definitely tolerated a lot more than he should have. Obama had like a and, $150 billion arms deal himself. Yeah. I think if you read the article that I read, once again, that number is like inflated, but like that was the announced number. So go ahead. So, you know, and I, that's completely unrelated to whether or not Trump has personal ties, but I'm just saying that the U S government has had a conflicted relationship with Saudi Arabia for a long time. And it's high time that that stops. Um, just because they have fucking oil and money doesn't mean we should bend over backwards. I don't mean, you know, know there is a looming humanitarian crisis right now in Yemen. 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 Nobody. And the Saudis are responsible. Nobody's fucking largely responsible. At least largely responsible. There's going to be a huge famine. There's weaponry that's being sold to Saudi Arabia from not just the U.S. but also Russia and other places around the globe. It's that are being used on. It's because they have the money that are being used to literally destroy people's human rights in certain areas. It's and bad, dude. There are some. It's, so it's look. I'm not. I'm never really in favor bad of in not Yemen having right talks. Now. It's really I'm bad. In, I'm never in favor of not having talks with a country. I think. If you had to press me on anything that I could see positive from Trump's campaigns or administration so far is the fact that we've talked with North Korea more than ever. I see that as a positive. I don't care what anybody says. Keep it up. Keep talking to him. Open dialogue is better than none. And I, I would support that still with Saudi Arabia. But I do think that when they murder a dissident journalist, then you could really start like being like, OK, yeah. well, freeze everything. And we need to start at least thinking about it. Germany. I guess I saw the other day they froze everything because they had arms sales to them, too. See, yeah, everybody has arms sales to everybody. It's crazy. But anyways, they froze their arms sales, and they were like, we're rethinking this. It's like, dude, come on, at least do that. Not kind of the currency yeah. of the world at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Arms what? sales. What, Saudi money? Dude, this is no, why I really, no. this, <laughs> this is why I really want... Arms and arms technology. This is why That's... I really want to bring... If we can get every single corner of this planet into the market economy fold, it, it'll, it'll do wonders because you can... Instead of wars, you just have economic sanctions. Now, this is a slippery slope as far as where the power is concentrated and what we do, and do we keep the UN? And we can have that debate for days and days and days. But you know, the power of markets, if everybody partakes, is strong. Like the thing that scares the rest of the world still about North Korea, and I'm not a high up, obviously, but I assume high ups. One of the things that probably still scares them is that they can still live off the grid largely somehow. And like that alone is independence, you know. But once you get them into the global trade fold, like it's crazy. Trump's tariffs are having actually a huge effect. Chinese stocks are down. Like um, farmers are hurting in the Midwest because China retaliated themselves. Like, dude, if we you get everyone in the fold, these pressures are insanely high. And especially if you rely on these economies to keep to sustain the population numbers we have, like we have population numbers where they are because economies are so efficient that we can pump out enough energy for people to eat and sustain. If that doesn't happen anymore, then so if you bring people into the fold and their populations explode, you know, these things are all so fascinating. So everyone get in the fold. But then there's a lot of slippery slopes. But We just need to hurry is. up and <laughs> master alternative energy so we can stop being so goddamn dependent on well, foreign energy. Well, that'd be helpful. Oh, that'd be just helpful for the planet, for everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, it would also be helpful well, in terms right. of international relationships. Yeah. Look so, at Yemen, everybody. Don't turn a blind eye. I don't think anybody is. I just, I just. Not a lot of people are aware of what's going on in Yemen. Yeah. I think, I think the average person has no idea that there is a looming humanitarian crisis in Yemen, completely orchestrated, orchestrated, completely orchestrated by the Saudi Arabian government. 100%. I also have this feeling that, and even Trump hasn't broken this mold that I have. Anybody who gets the presidency, you can talk a lot of talk, but being on the world stage and actually having to deal with other leaders and I know. deal with foreign crises and stuff like that, that's a whole nother thing. You can be populist all you want, but somehow when Trump passed his taxes, he did not, he was not populist at all. And it made me upset. Okay. And it, and it actually went for a lot of like corporations and stuff. What the hell? Mm-hmm. So like, this is the kind of stuff that I'm just like, what the hell happened? 
some for even Trump, even though his rhetoric still is campaignish when he's out there at rallies, look at the policy. The policy is regular ass George W. Bush policy. The same shit. The same shit. Okay. Some things are different. He had the balls to move the um um uh embassy to Jerusalem. But what the Trump administration doesn't tell you is that Democrats and Republicans supported that for years. They just never had the balls to do it. It was never like Democrats said no. Both parties said they wanted to, but both neither party had the balls. So there's some stuff like that. But, dude, he's gotten into power, and he's been a typical Republican. Typical Republican. Like, when are, when are, when are, are a lot of these populist Trump supporters going to understand that? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Dude, another lie that he told in the last week, this last week has been crazy. Another lie he told was, Chad, I don't know if you saw this. It sounds like you follow this stuff a little bit. He said that, oh, there's going to be a 10% tax cut for the middle class. For the, before, oh, before November the 1st. Midterms, yeah. Before November 1st. Guess yeah. who's not in session until after the midterms? Congress. Guess what you can't do without Congress? Pass a, ta pass a tax cut like that. So he just goes out there and he just says stuff. But then if you actually look at the policy, it's really disappointing. And it's not populist. I miss no. the days when politicians were a yep. lot better at lying. Because it's not even... It's not even like a gray lie or a white lie or some sort of in between. He's just he's just blatantly lying. Then, what you like, share to chat about South Africa? Go ahead. South Africa recently today. Like you mean? He nominated some Mar-a-Lago person. I don't know. I didn't read it. Oh yes, oh. yeah. Some uh, the diplomat to South Africa is the fourth person he has nominated from that has a Mar-a-Lago Mar uh, membership. So to be the fair, fourth person, my 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 typical are like our lower middle class upbringing, skeptical of everything, like knee jerk reaction side of me wants to be like, come on, really corruption? <laughs> Maybe all these people are qualified. I don't know, but I strongly she's not, she's sense not. that's not the case. Okay, if that's you okay. if you read the article I posted, she's not. She's um so she's originally from South Africa. She's um, the daughter of a very rich family, I believe. She owns some sort of handbag company. She sells like six-figure handbags. Um, she has no experience at all in diplomatic relations. She has no experience at all in, in any sort of politics or anything of that though. nature. That's it. That's literally the only qualifying. <laughs> if that's the only thing that qualifies you to be a diplomat, I'm severely disappointed in the bars we set. That's all I'm saying. But no, she's completely, um, she has no, I want to say she's underexperienced. It's not even that. She has no experience at all. What was the, um, what was the quote I saw earlier this week? Oh, yeah. This is the worst president ever because he just doesn't give a fuck about anything or anyone but himself. <laughs> all right. I mean, just don't forget It that. does feel that way. It really does feel that way. Yeah. Jesus. Worst president ever is an exaggeration, by the way. I'm sure we've had other presidents that suck their own nuts, but. I think he's the worst yeah. and just he has no idea what he's doing and he clearly is being taken advantage of by people know. around him who have nefarious less than less than positive intentions, I should say. All right, well, let's let's leave it at saying something positive for the president. So Ugh. I'll say, hey, whatever you do to make sure your hair looks that way every day, you're doing a great job. I know it takes a long <laughs> time. Good for you. Let's All take right, a lot of I got one. I got one. Trump, I don't think you're inherently evil. I think you're just incompetent. Oh, there is you that go. nice. That's nice yeah, in that's some regard. Yeah, that's actually not bad. For, especially the, the things that have happened in the last couple of weeks. That's a genuine compliment. <laughs> I think it's a genuine compliment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Caleb. All right, let's on. cut Round it. Round it yeah. off. No, yeah. come on. Caleb's got to throw. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Round it out. <laughs> what about, nice wait, thing. what am I rounding out? You have to say something nice about Trump before we end. Uh, Caleb. Uh, <laughs> he okay. has to pay for sex like everybody else. Nice. What? That's a compliment. Even We're the richest among us are the <laughs> Even same. the richest among us are just like us. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> wow. I know I pay for my sex. So that's it for episode 58. There uh, you go. There you go. <laughs>